and welcome back to my series where we talk about classical mythology while I crochet. Today we're going to talk about depictions of the underworld in classical mythology. The most notable ones being in book 11 of the Odyssey, we have Odysseus going down into the underworld, and in book 6 of the Aeneid, we have Aeneas going down. Now, Virgil is much more descriptive than Homer is, and Aeneas goes further into the underworld, but there's a few similarities we could talk about first. Rivers of the underworld kind of just are always there. We have the Acheron, Cocytus, the Phlegethon, I think, the River of Fire, and Styx. We also have Lethe, but that's in the Isle of the Blessed, and Odysseus does not get that far. We also have the start of this idea that good people get to go to a good place, bad people get to go to a bad place. And we see that in Odysseus spying Sisyphus and Tantalus in their punishments, and also knowing that some of his comrades got down there, his mom's down there, you know, some of his friends. Odysseus's journey is more so about meeting with people so we see them appearing as shades. They can't really be touched, but they can be talked to and you can recognize who they are. Um, and we also find out right away that burial is the way that you get to your eternal resting place because one of his fallen comrades asks him to go to his body and give it its rights. While Hades is the lord of the dead and his wife Persephone is considered the Hera of the underworld, the person actually judging the souls is King Minos and we see him sitting on a throne and laying out his judgment for people that are lined up. Here we start to see some differences between the two. So Virgil has an actual place that he puts the entrance to the underworld at. It's Avernus, which is actually a volcanic crater, and they talk about it smelling. That's the sulfur from the volcanic crater. So it's interesting that they put the entrance to the underworld in a real life place. Um, in the Odyssey, Circe told Odysseus just cross the ocean just completely cross the ocean, whatever that means. Unlike Odysseus, Aeneas actually has to cross into the underworld, so he gets a little interaction with Charon, who says only shades are allowed on his ferry boat, and the heroes that have made it through have caused trouble, so Aeneas has to convince him he's there for good reasons. And once he does, he almost sinks the boat, because it's not meant to carry people. Virgil also lays the groundwork for Dante's Inferno by specifying that certain types of deaths get put in certain places and certain types of people get put into certain places. So for example, some of the first shades they come across once they cross the rivers are the crying spirits of infants. Virgil puts the shades of the babies in the same place that he puts the shades of people who have been executed for crimes they did not commit, which is a weird little take on Roman morality. As Aeneas gets further in, he eventually gets to a fork where to the left we have Tartarus, and there's this huge gate of adamant behind which is a fortress surrounded by a moat of lava, and supposedly the Hydra is inside the fortress, so we can only imagine what bad things are happening there. To the right, we have the Field of the Blessed, and Virgil saves this spot for people who died for their country, priests, poets, because Virgil is a poet. And those people get the gift of reincarnation. The fates award them a second body. And so they drink from another river of the underworld, Lethe, which causes them to re forget their past life so they are primed for a new life. Virgil kind of uses this as some propaganda because Aeneas sees future Romans there, including Julius and Augustus. So we can take what we need to from that. But also interesting is that in Virgil's version, the ways to exit, there's two gates to exit the underworld if you're sailing out. There is the Gate of Horn, which is where true spirits exit, and the Gate of Ivory, where false dreams exit. Aeneas goes out the Gate of Ivory right after hearing about all these future Romans, so... If you've read Dante's Inferno, you know that Dante puts poets like Virgil 
in this area that's just before hell because they're unbaptized. And it's not their fault that they're not Christian. They were just born in the wrong era. So um, that's why he is okay with Virgil being his guide, despite this underworld existing outside of the Christian pantheon and in the Greek pantheon. He thinks that Virgil was onto something. He was onto the idea that sin bad... Punishment for sin happens in the afterlife, and if you were good, you get rewarded. So, that's why we have Virgil being the guide to the underworld later in Dante.